Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ray Torn and welcome back to Hearts of Arm 4. So while I was on vacation, we had a poll to select which country we're going to play as for today's series. So members on YouTube and patrons had four countries to select between. Spain and Japan tied for second place, while Italy was in last place with only one vote. So clearly, not many people keen on watching an Italian campaign. Russia did get first place, that's who we're going to be playing as. We'll be starting as the Soviet Union going down their focus tree to invite the Tsar back, become the, the Russian Empire again. Now, from my understanding, this is one of the more difficult civil wars in the game. I have not gone down this route of their focus tree before, so this is going to be a, a first-time experience for me. I like doing it on camera for the first time since, you know, I don't really know how things are going to go and everything's a little bit unexpected and so I can't really plan for things. It tends to make the campaign a bit more difficult as well. And I did hop into the game and re-familiarize myself with the Soviet focus tree because it's been a while since we played as the Soviets. I think that's when the No Step Back uh, expansion came out. That was the last time that we played as them. So I've already got this all set up. We got the Major Nation uh, buffs here set on two for all the AI countries where it's possible, with the exception of ourselves. Uh, all this stuff with the foreign policy and the uh, gameplay rules and, and covert actions and then all the stuff after the AI behavior, all this is on the default settings. The only thing that we've changed here is of course the AI behavior because we will not be playing with the historical AI focuses. We did that for the Swedish campaign and so I'd like to do something a little bit different here. We also have already done a return of the monarchies campaign. We did that as the British in 2022 and so we're not going to do that again where we have everybody go monarchist. Instead we're going to have uh, a situation where basically we won't have any democratic countries. Kind of just scroll through here and show you what we got. Everybody's going to be going, if it's possible, uh, everybody's going to be going communist, fascist, or with a monarchy. Uh, most of them will be fascist or communist, so we should have two powerful factions to oppose us. And then there also is going to be the central powers. So we will restore them. Just I think it's kind of fun to have uh, Germany go that route while we're returning the Tsar. And so Germany will have their Kaiser, and then we also have the Hungarians restoring Austria-Hungary, so they'll be in the central powers. However, I did not have Turkey go down their Ottoman Empire route, mostly because the AI seems to have a lot of difficulty with that route, and also because we've already had Turkey go down that route quite a few times in our campaign, so I wanted to try something a little bit different, and so we got Turkey going with the militaristic fascism. Uh, we do have Greece joining the Central Powers, though, kind of make up for losing Turkey. And the Italians might as well. I'm not entirely sure uh, what they'll do here because we have them going the monarchist route to form the Roman Empire. I think that'd be interesting. We had the Italians go down this route in the Greek campaign, but they had a bit of difficulty with it. So I'd like to give them another shot and see how that works. And again, they might end up joining the Central Powers. And so that could be kind of interesting if you have Germany, Italy, Austria, Hungary, and uh, Greece all in the same faction. Uh, so, of course, we got ourselves set to default here. Japan is going to go with the fascist route. I find that when it comes to the communist one, they just never seem to succeed. It always ends up in this uh, never-ending civil war, or the communists just fell in the civil war. And so we're going to keep them on the fascist route. The French, we're going to have them go with the communist routes. Uh, generally, if you have them go any other way, they fell to the communists anyway. So let's just have them go that route. Plus... When Germany restores the Kaiser, it does boost the communist support in France by quite a bit, so it does cause some problems for France if they go any other route on their focus tree. Poland is going to be trying to restore the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. We also have Lithuania doing that as well, so they've gone that monarchist route. And so they should be in opposition to us, make Poland a little bit more powerful, as they're going to be you know, right next to the Central Powers and ourselves. We've got Australia going communist, as well as New Zealand, while Canada and South Africa are going fascist. So out of these four dominions, you got two going communist, two going fascist, and then you have India also going communist here. Kind of split them up a little bit between the two, uh, the two different ideologies. We've already looked at the Hungarians. Romania, we're doing the Balkans dominance. Communist for Yugoslavia. I mean, I'm not going to go through all these. You can kind of see what we have with the, the minor powers course with China and communist China are a little bit limited here not very many options yeah for the most part I split them up between communist and fascist trying to make the factions somewhat equal uh, the British are going fascist as well while the United States is going communist we have not had the US go communist that often 
that should be interesting. Another route we haven't had uh, in many of our campaigns, if, if at all, is the Dutch going communist. So we've got them set that way. The Mexicans are going fascist. The Iberian Peninsula with Spain and Portugal are going communist. Bulgaria fascist. They won't look at all these, uh, but with Switzerland we haven't gone the Imperial route. And then here with the Nordic countries, I think we got them kind of split up. So you got Sweden going fascist. Uh, Norway is going monarchist, Finland is going communist, and Denmark is also going monarchy. Uh, and this is expansionist monarchy, of course, because they already have the, the monarchy there. Uh, but this should result in them trying to gain control of the rest of the Nordic countries, and Iceland is going fascist. Alright, so let's go and apply that. And uh, we will not be playing on a higher difficulty. We've already made the campaign a bit more difficult with our major nation buffs, so let's not... Uh, just causes us to have all these penalties and make everything take longer. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, let's go ahead and jump on into the game now. Now again, from my understanding, this is a difficult route to go. Since I think the only territory you get is the territory over here. So Siberia and all this territory here in the east. Which there's not much here when it comes to resources or, or industry. There's a few. You got some steel here. So it's not the worst uh, territory, but most of this is is not as good as the West, of course. And then I think you get a few patches as well. Uh, and I think the reason for uh, the East going to the Whites here in the, the second Russian Civil War uh, is the fact that uh, many of the Whites were in Manchuria uh, historically. And so I think that's the idea is that they're coming across the borders and you know leading the Civil War here. So we're going to want to build in this territory in fact, let's go and start with that now. We need to get some civilian factories over here. Really, the industry is just absolutely garbage, and we will need to improve that. Maybe we should do that first. Now, it's never beneficial to build infrastructure just for the construction bonus. You're better off instead just working on the factories that you want. It's just not going to pay itself off. However, you know you're going to build the infrastructure up, and it does make sense to do that first. Because, yeah, this is just terrible infrastructure here. Uh, we're probably going to have to do a few things like railways and supply hubs to ensure that we don't have a lack of supply over here because this is a difficult place to fight over. We've, we've uh, invaded Russia from this side in many past campaigns and it's always always challenging due to the supply. So improving the infrastructure is just one step towards doing that. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, build up the infrastructure across the region. There's other benefits to doing this as well. We should only do it in locations where we have some space to build probably. Well, I guess you do want to worry about the uh, supply through here, so I guess it makes sense. And plus there's, I'm not entirely sure how far it goes though, like what we'll actually get. Let's just do this for now. Yeah, there's the, the benefits of the resources, there's the benefits of the supply, and then of course the construction bonuses we'll get as we build uh, the civilian factory and military factory. But another thing to consider is that we're on the civilian economy, so building civilian factories and military factories takes longer as it is. Doesn't affect infrastructure though, so. And yeah, we'll work on that. Uh, let's go ahead and get our research slots selected. Which we're just going to go with the, the typical stuff here. Nothing special. Alright, so with that done, we need to assign our military factories and dockyards. Let me see if there's anything we want to do with these ships. I get rid of any of them. I mean, they're all pretty close to being done here. We'll get them all assigned to Leningrad and also ensure that we're only building one more of these. Jeez. Yeah. They're building a lot of these crappy submarines, so let's just build one. Alright, so that looks pretty good. And then let's go ahead and move these planes up as well. You know, let's do it this way instead. Move all the ships down to the bottom here. I don't know if this is actually the quicker way to do it, but it's the way the way we did it. And we're not going to build these anymore. They're just not very good. But we'll continue to build both of these models here until we get experience to make adjustments to these. And probably put a lot of factories into these as well. Now I'm not sure if we want to use the tactic of getting rid of all your divisions. Probably. Because I assume that the Soviets are going to get the majority of them. And so it probably would be more beneficial for us to just get rid of every division that we have. Yeah, I think that's probably what I want to do. We're going to continue to build these BT-7s here. They're really not a bad tank model. 
and we don't have any experience to make adjustments anyways. And we got three factories going into trucks, so that's good. Let's put some into the artillery and the support equipment, and then maybe a bit more into the infantry equipment. All right, so that looks pretty solid for now. Leave the dockyards as is as well. And then we want to take a look at our trade situation. Seems that we need rubber. We're just gonna uh, trade for one factory worth. We'll have a little bit of shortage here, but that is fine. And then all of our divisions over here, let's just select them all. Put them into one army for now. And then these guys in the east will be in a separate army. Doesn't really matter, but because we're just gonna train them up for the experience. I, I think we should keep them around for now. And I think some of these guys do have some supply issues here. So move them around a little bit. I think we have one motorized unit somewhere. See if we can find it. Let me just double check on that. Yeah, we have one motorized unit. I don't think we'll, we'll make use of these. Probably going to turn them into a tank unit. But the rest of these will keep around. Uh, even the cab, simply because there's 22 divisions of them. And also, there are some bonuses for cab units for the Russians. So maybe we want to keep them around and and actually make use of them. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get that one motorized unit. And then we're gonna switch him over to the tanks. Some of our division designs are actually fairly decent, particularly the mountain troops. You don't really have to make very many adjustments to these. You can keep this as is. You just gotta add some more support companies here and then you're good to go. And so those are pretty good. Infantry, you know, pretty basic here, but only a few more adjustments you gotta make there can't change up the NKVD. These are special units. Can't get rid of them. Can't change them. And then here's our tank design. So obviously got to get all the support companies and that kind of stuff. Now remember we will name these units based on your guys' suggestions if you want. So just post those down in the comments below. Now I know a lot of people like to use the names of the, the language of the country. I prefer that the, the names are actually in English just so I can pronounce them. Uh, I don't uh, speak Russian despite the fact that my father was Russian. Never knew my father. He left when I was really young and then he died just a few years later. So I was raised by my mom, took my mom's last name. So yeah, I don't, I don't speak any Russian. And so I'd prefer that it was in English. You guys know that I'm terrible with foreign languages. Yeah, we can go ahead and get rid of this one now. I don't see any reason to keep that around. All right, so we need to go ahead and select our national focus. Just take a look at the, the full tree here, which as we've seen when we played the Soviet Union, we went that Stalinist route. It is a massive focus tree, very large focus tree here, guys. So a lot of different options. So to kind of go through this real quick. So this is the industrial route and you are limited on this one on uh, when you can do it because of the controlled factory requirement. And also once you go to war with a major power, you cannot continue down the five year plans. Now, I don't think you're limited to being communist to do these. It does require that you don't do, do the uh, curtailment of the collective farms, but I don't even think that's down our route. I don't recall where it's at. I think it's somewhere around here. I think it's this route actually. Yeah, it's right here under the right opposition. So we're not going that route. And so I think you can still do these five year plans as long as you're not at war with a major power and you have the required factories. Uh, we're not gonna be going down this route right now. Uh, most of these probably build in territory that will not be ours anyways in the Civil War. Uh, this is the air route to the focus tree, uh, the naval one. And then we have the, the army one here with a lot of different choices. So these are the political focus branches. So this one is the path of Marxism Lenin, uh, Leninism. So we won't be going that route. Instead, we'll be going with the beaten but not defeated. You have the two different directions here. So you have the, the fascist one, which I think is down here somewhere. Yeah, right there. And then the Romanov reconstruction. So they share much of the focus tree, the fascist and the monarchist. And so I think we should just focus on that because I believe this all makes the Civil War a little bit easier when you do it. So this one allows for interactions with foreign powers for aid during the Soviet Civil War when a headquarter has been created. You get some modifiers, which I think most of these are only added once the Soviet Civil War begins. You also have a change of popularity of fascism and non-aligned. 
I would assume that affects how many states you get, but maybe not. Usually in Civil Wars it does, so the more online we have, more states we'd get, but maybe not. Here's some on-map de decisions to infiltrate states, making them controlled at the start of the Civil War, so you do have options for doing that. And so that's something we're going to want to make use of. We need to get control of that, or, or get access to this as soon as possible. Uh, decisions to frame hardy members and military personnel. All pretty useful stuff here, recruiting old guard units. So yeah, we'll look at this as we go through it. I think that's what we should do, is just kind of focus on that. And uh, some of these are 35 day focuses as well. Quite a few of them actually. So this first one is gonna start the process uh, towards the Soviet Civil War, and also gonna give us 25 political power. So that's what we're gonna go and get now. So we'll keep our troops training. Now, as for our planes, I don't think It'd be wise to train those. As we've seen with the Soviet campaign, we have some massive penalties as the Soviet Union. So this is a political power and stability penalty. Your uh, politicized military result in doctrines costing more. You get some nice bonuses as well. Uh, production efficiency growth is worse. You have less civilian factories that you have access to. Uh, the Soviet Air Force is the one that matters right now. Because remember, we get the air accident chance plus 75%. That's massive. That's going to be a lot of planes that are being destroyed if you train them. So I don't know if it's worth it or not. Especially we saw with the Swedish campaign that they clearly adjusted this where you uh, take a lot more casualties from air accidents. And that was a problem without this massive 75% penalty. Now also we get the, the Red Army penalty here. So I don't think we're going to train up the planes. We can move some to the east, though. I know we have a few over here, and there's more space available. Uh, let's get rid of the strategic bombers here, just because there's only 24, and we're not building those. And there's another air wing around here that those will go into. And so let's just go and start moving these over to the east until we just don't have enough space available. So move the ones from Leningrad over there. Also set them all to the normal operations. And might want to get rid of a few air wings. It's not like any of these have any experience anyways. And then they can just fill out the losses. I don't know if that's too many, probably. Just might want to keep a few over here. Maybe get rid of these tactical bombers. Yeah, we'll do that. And then maybe also get rid of a, a fighter wing somewhere here. We'll get rid of these guys. All right, so that's the Air Force manage. Uh, let's go ahead and do the, the fleet now. And so we might want to keep some of these in the Black Sea, since sometimes you can have trouble getting through here. But not the, uh, not the surface ships, just the submarines. So we're going to move these guys over here, and then just make sure all the rest of our fleet, even the ones in the east, are over here for now. Or maybe we should move them all to the east, actually, instead of what I normally do. But on, you know, in that capital area, just move them over here, because we want to reorganize them anyways. Now, I don't know that you can just move them over here and have access to them. Probably not. Usually, Paradox has adjusted the way the Civil Wars work. Yeah, I think we've done everything we need to do here. So let's go and turn up to speed five. But yeah, I know Paradox has adjusted the way the Civil Wars work so that, uh, you know, just moving all the units out of uh, the territory you know is going to rebel is no longer as effective as it used to be. So these guys need to be given a new order to come over here. So they should be on their way now. But yeah, I'm not entirely sure if they've done anything to adjust some of the exploits here where you can just like delete all the units and then use all your equipment to set it up so you have a bunch of units building. Because while it took all the stockpile and, and distributed it between the two Civil War countries, and then also takes all the units and distributes those between the two Civil War countries, it doesn't take, or at least it didn't used to, take the units that were building. And so it's kind of an exploit to easily win some wars. So I don't know if that works anymore. Might not. All right, so we've taken that option. Now we do have an event here. I guess we'll take a look at what it has to say here. Uh, Joseph Stalin is concerned about factionalism. Uh, so this is going to activate the paranoia system. So it unlocks the political paranoia decisions. And we'll see paranoia increase by one weekly. So remember that system is in the decisions here. 
And so we can forge satisfactory production reports and this will decrease paranoia by 20, but it does require some civilian factories. I think once it gets to a certain point, maybe 100%, that's where they start with the, the purges. It's been a while since I played as the, the Soviets. This does cost 25 political power, but definitely something we'll probably want to do to avoid some of the issues this causes once it gets a little bit higher here. Uh, we can also set up a secret headquarters. So that's in uh, Cheetah right here. I don't know if there's any other uh, options that are going to become available for where you set up your secret headquarters. Let me just take a look here. The threat of yet another civil war is upon us. We must prepare ourselves for the worst and ensure control of as much of the country and the armed forces as possible. But we must also be careful and avoid drawing too much attention uh, if Joseph Stalin might force our hand before we are ready. Okay, so right now we have 10% support, it looks like. 10% among the Army, 2% among the Navy, 2% among the Air Force. Uh, popular support is at 0%. It affects Stalin's surrender level and adds partisan units during the war. There's a daily 20% risk that Stalin starts the war when paranoia is over 90%. So we definitely want to keep that from getting too high. I, I don't like the idea of setting up the headquarters here. I don't know if there's going to be any other options. Like I'd like to set it up over here. Yeah, Siberia is traditionally an anti-Stalinist and anti-Bolshevik stronghold. The region may be underdeveloped, but should be relatively easy to win over to our cause. Now, it does have some nice bonuses once you do establish it. Popular support for an uprising increases by 1%. Support for the opposition in the armed forces will increase by up to 2%. Let's just wait and see if anything else opens up here before we do that. So that's one of the interesting aspects of me being unfamiliar with a mechanic is has kind of got to uh, fumble my way through it, make mistakes, and things happen as they do. Uh, so there's two routes that we can go here. Uh, so this one, I think, is leading towards uh, getting the support of the church. And so you can tick down the communism support and get some stability, so that's nice. Got some political power there as well. The bonus here for construction speed would be helpful since we're trying to build up the east right now. Get some new advisors. Okay. And then we have this route here. You can't even do that until after you've done the headquarters. And it will increase paranoia. So something to consider. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and start getting rid of some of that uh, communist support right now because obviously it's it's very high at 88 percent i don't know how that affects uh the civil war situation but i assume it would affect it in some capacity and uh a bunch of stuff happening with other countries italy's dealing with their the war over here in ethiopia annexing that uh little separate power that was there separate part of ethiopia it looks like they should be able to get this completed fairly quickly. They're having a lot of success there. Generally, I don't see the AI have too many problems with Ethiopia anymore. I remember before uh, that one expansion for Italy, it seemed like they sometimes would have a lot of issues over there. That's not usually the case anymore, though. All right, so Germany's civil war has begun, as they're going to be returning the Kaiser. We finished up our focus, and Turkey seizes control of the Bosporus. Uh, so we can mobilize the armed forces immediately, get some war support, uh, the Turkish government will either offer a compromise solution to us or they will escalate the situation further. We'll have the opportunity to de-escalate the situation should our conflict begin to seem likely. Or instead we can say that the Turkish Straits will be remilitarized and Turkey will gain the power to regulate all naval traffic that passes through them. Which obviously we don't want that because we won't be able to move through here at all. I'd like to see the compromise. I'm kind of curious what's going to happen here. So let's go with this one. And if worse comes to worse, we can always fight the Turks. Not exactly the route I had planned. We're gonna go with this option next, since it's only 35 days, the political power is helpful, and just trying to reduce the popularity of communism. One thing I get asked quite a bit in my new campaigns, because I sometimes forget to address it, is what the goals for the campaign are. Uh, so for this campaign, we would like to basically reconquer any territory that used to be part of Imperial Russia. 
So we're looking to get in the territory over here. In particular, you know, in uh, Eastern Europe. Might go after Finland as well. I mean, we'll probably conquer a, a lot of territory. Uh, but those are the main goals. Get that territory over there. Maybe a bit of conquest in the Middle East as well. Kind of expand our interest there. Most importantly, we have to avenge our defeat in the Russo-Japanese War. And so we will want to defeat Japan and get all this territory back here. Uh, which I think we have Manchuria set to uh, be disobedient to the Japanese, to rebel against them. Now, we do have to worry about lack of supply in this territory. I know we're currently working on building infrastructure up, so let's just go ahead and set the motorization priority for all these units to full here. Maybe that'll improve the situation to a degree. We'll have to see. Uh, looks like we are short on trucks now, quite a bit. All right, so it's not going to help us that much if we don't have the trucks to do it. Uh, so yeah, we got that event about them re-militarizing the, the straits, and they offered us a compromise. So after much negotiating, the Turkish government has decided to take control of the straits while still permitting free access to all nations bordering the Black Sea. The ironclad proposal provided by Turkey leaves little room for protest and has already been hastily approved by Bulgaria and Romania, which ultimately ties our hands on the matter. Okay, so I think that means we can still move through here though, which is what's important. All right, so yeah, we have these free dockyards over here. Let's go to get these assigned. Probably the larger ships first. Makes the most sense to try and get those constructed since they take some time to do. And then also, we're not getting that supply. Do we not have any convoys? We have 50. Okay, so let me see. Can we trade with these guys instead? to satisfy our, our rubber needs. And then we should probably set up to build some convoys here since we have so few of these. And maybe take away, you know, it's fine. That's yeah, fine for now. Russia has a lot of resources, so don't have to trade too much. There's just a few resources that they, that they lack. So let me just take a look. Nothing has changed here. We haven't really gone very far in our focus tree or anything either though. Uh, where is Paranoia at? Currently at 14%. So remember we can tick that down by 20%. Just gotta keep an eye on that. And Stalin ensures the loyalty of an admiral. So the effect of this in 20 days is that Gorshkov is gonna become loyal to Stalin. I don't know if there's any way to stop that or anything we can do about it. I'm not entirely sure what your options are. What if we just took a look at that Admiral? He's a level three here. So yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything we can do. I could be wrong on that front though. You think it'd be a decision or something. And maybe that's not an option until after we set up the, the secret headquarters. We might just have to do it. Let me just see here. Where's that option? that allows you to, yeah, you probably gotta set up the headquarters first. Might not have a choice in where you set the, the headquarters up. Yeah, this one here. Yeah, maybe you gotta set it up there. Okay, I mean, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. I'm only worried about the, uh, the paranoia that this causes, but we can just get rid of that here. We have the political power. Yeah, I guess we'll do it. Why not? It has bonuses if we do it. So here, this will be completed in a couple days. It's supposed to increase paranoia by 10%, but it did not. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, but now we have some other options available here on the map to start infiltrating. Okay, so we can't do that until after we have that embrace the black hundreds, which we saw on the focus tree. Okay, so we can eventually kind of expand over to here, but I think this is where your capital is, which is why I preferred to have it uh, over here. But again, might not have been an option. So each of these is gonna cost five a little power. Yeah, and then also increase paranoia by five. Takes 14 days, increases the popular support and support for the opposition and the armed forces. So this is where we stand now. Army support's now at 12% and popular support is at 2%. 
got our first tech finished up here. Now let's go and get the mechanical computing next. Yeah, we'll keep all our troops for now, keep them training. In this case we need them for like a small conflict or something. And also so we can continue to build up our, our army experience. All right, so I think what we we'll wanna do next, I mean, this one would be useful to have, but it's a 70 day focus. And so I think it might be better to go and start down this route here. So that increases the paranoia by 10. Yeah, maybe I was wrong about which, uh, thinking that this one increased the paranoia by 10. All right, so the Kingdom of Poland crowns a king. So we'll form, we'll see them form the Commonwealth eventually. Yeah, I don't think there's anything we can do about that here. We have uh, a new one that just popped up, the Stalin Constitution. So he's working to complete the Stalin Constitution. Uh, popular support for an uprising decreases by 1%. When the Civil War starts, the centrists will get the modifiers from the Stone Constitution focus. Okay. So yeah, we can go ahead and do this now. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Reduce his paranoia. Since I'm not entirely sure how often you can do it, I'm wondering if when you finish it up, if you can just do it again. And so in that case, it'd be the most beneficial to just do it every time you get to 20. Uh, we do have 150 political power now, so we can go ahead and modify a few things here. Uh, so probably want to go ahead and change out of civilian economy to the partial mobilization. Just do those big old penalties, Gaunt. And then also when it comes to getting advisors here, a lot of them aren't available yet. And some of these are going to be removed and... So it might just be a waste of a little power. Yeah, because I'm not entirely sure who's going to end up getting purged if, if the purges happen when you go this route and who's going to be on our side. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's probably best to just go ahead and do the uh, mobilization option here. Uh, so let's go and do that. Give us access to more of our civilian factories and we can build a lot quicker as well. And uh, looks like we've gotten some of that infrastructure done as well. Excellent. So that should help improve the situation over here. And then I suppose we're going to want to focus I'm building in this region here since it's the only one that we currently, uh, we should probably wait until they finish that. Um, but it's the only one we currently know that we're gonna get control of in the Civil War. And there's no uh, no factories there. Uh, Yugoslavia recognizes the Soviet Union because they are going their communist route. Uh, we got the basic machine tools. Let's go with the concentrated industry. Just don't find it worth it going with the dispersed these days. See how the Civil War goes in Germany. I don't think I've ever seen Hitler win this before. I think he always loses. And we have Japanese provo uh, provocation at our border. So as part of maintaining the demarcation line on the border between us and Japan, a work party was sent to check the demarcation markers near Lake Kasan. When approaching the border, the work party was taken under fire by local Japanese outposts. We have launched a formal diplomatic protest, but the Japanese ambassador maintains that the work party was sent to move the markers to allow us to claim more territory. The Japanese have assured us that they will respect the border, but will not allow any tampering with the current demarcation and will respond with force should we attempt to do so. This effectively means that we can no longer move freely about our territory in the area. That is unacceptable. So Japan can escalate the incident to a border conflict. We'll instantly lose if we have no divisions in the state. Oh, okay, so we should probably move units there then. I suppose we'll just have them go all the way around here. And then select everybody here. We'll just move some cab units over here. And I know none of this matters here, but we'll set up. Set it up anyways. Moving units to the east isn't a bad idea. Anyways. Just move them over here. So unification of the exiles has been completed, getting us that political power, but increasing the paranoia as well. And this allows for those interactions with the foreign powers once the civil war begins. So we have three choices here. You only have to get one of them to embrace the Black Hundreds. That's probably what we want to do since that one's important for uh, infiltrating states. So just get one. We might get more eventually. A lot of these increase fascism support rather than the, the non-aligned, or they do uh, both, but it's more fascism. 
I mean, I guess it's all better than having communist support, though. So just taking a look at the options here. Uh, once the Second Russian Civil War begins, we'll get the fascist women's movement, which grants recruitable, pop uh, recruitable population factors. So that would be helpful. Uh, and factory and dockyard outputs. So all that's pretty good. There's the true czars. So this is the one you probably want to get for the most not aligned. I mean, technically, it's supposed to give you 10%, uh, but that's a lot of fascist support. And this will give you 1,500 weekly manpower and 10% stability. Uh, this one here gives you two military factories in the capital. I see. I mean, they're all pretty useful, honestly. Uh, let's go and go with the true czars. It makes the most sense. That's the one that's the least fascist. Then also we got our civilian factories available over here. Still a little building up in this area. Okay, so probably want to focus on the locations where we've already got the 60%. Uh, what we could do is get more infrastructure going, but I am worried about the, the situation currently with the, the lack of civilian factories and military factories in this area. So let's go and just, yeah, we'll just build in these, these areas that we assume we're going to get control of. Get ourselves some civilian factories here. So we'll build a build. So we'll do like, I don't know, three of these. And we could use more civilian factories for building anyways. All right, so that looks solid. Let's take a look at these decisions that we have available here. All right, so Baku oil rights for the military buildup. So with this, we give over the oil rights over here. That's 118 oil. So the majority of the oil that our country has access to. And we're gonna give those rights to Germany. I don't know if there's any way to end that outside of going to war with them. And so it's kind of crippling. What? It does have a nice bonus here. If accepted, the German Empire will start building military factories in our capital, or, you know, soon to be capital. Uh, the Russian exiles get German tanks and uh, rifles, and the German Empire will get those resource rights, as we, as we discussed. But one uh, significant penalty here is that we're going to see paranoia increase. Now, maybe it'll only be by 5, 60% of that, or 10% chance it goes up by 20. But that's kind of giving up a lot, but you might need it. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, for now, we'll just say we don't need to be notified about that. Uh, the other options are regarding Japan, which we can't do because we have that ongoing, uh, ongoing conflict with them. See a few other things are happening here. Stalin's ensuring the loyalty of one of our generals. And yeah, that terrorist center one, which I don't think we can avoid. Normally you'd avoid it by completing one of those focuses. And uh, none of those are options for us on the route we're going on our focus tree. Yeah, I'm pretty sure none of those are our choices. I think those are all over there on the communist route. And so therefore, we can't avoid it. And I think that's uh, the purge, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, we'll have the first Moscow trial and this purge will not be avoided. So nothing to be done about that. I wanna say the purge has decreased the paranoia though which we really don't have very many options for decreasing paranoia, and it's would be really bad. Oh, we didn't get an event about this border conflict starting up. So all the troops are going to be moving over to this area. And we have to hope that we have enough over here to get her done. But yeah, if it gets up to, to 90%, then we'll be in a, a bad situation because it's a 20% chance that it can start the Civil War, which obviously we are not, uh, not ready for that conflict. Uh, let's go ahead and do... I don't know that we really need to get excavation right now. Yeah, I probably don't have to get that at the moment. Now, I want to say that whatever we get is going to apply to both sides of the Civil War. I think they just uh, get kind of identical copies of the, the tech tree. So, like, if you're going for stuff like this here that's going to give you bonuses, you know, for your combat troops, it's going to apply to both sides. I suppose we'll just go for some of these passive modifiers. I don't think it makes any sense to go for ship stuff right now. Since you can't really build the ships, I mean, we'll build it with our dockyards that we have, but you just have to assume that with whatever ships you build, they're going to get destroyed in the Civil War. You know, they're going to be split up between the two sides, and I think that's based off of that percentage that we've seen here, which I think that's interesting the way they do that here. So 10% naval support, I, mean, I think that means we get 10% of the fleet, so anything we build... 90% of that goes to the Soviet Union. And I don't know how much of that we get back after the Civil War. I think we should get whatever we don't destroy, but 
yeah, who knows what's going to make it there. Uh, currently, uh, okay, so we're still losing, but we're about to get a tank there. Let's see how this goes. Hopefully you can win that there. This border conflict. And we do have another decision available, anti-democratic raids. So yeah, we probably don't, don't want to do that. I'd rather have them have democratic support over communist support. So yeah, we don't need to do that right now. Can escalate the conflict here with Japan, or you can end it. So that's going to happen in 70 days. Yeah, we can escalate the conflict. That'll increase the combat width by 100 and give a 0 0.15 combat modifier. And it will result in us declaring war. Or it activates the ability to declare war, perhaps. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. We do not want to go to war with Japan right now. I prefer not to escalate the conflict, honestly. So we will not be taking that option. We'll just say we don't need to be notified of it. Currently, paranoia is at 38%. We'll have to see if we can do this again once the uh, week here is up. You would think so. Well, maybe not. Nope, you get one chance to do it. But again, it doesn't really matter when you do it. It's 20% regardless, as long as you do it when you have Baranoia at 20%. So we did finish up our focus here, the True Czars. So increasing the non-aligned support, and that's a nice little bonus once the Civil War begins. And then I guess we'd want to go ahead and start doing this one here so we can try and infiltrate states. Though, let me just take a look. Doesn't that increase Paranoia? So that's probably something to consider. But I mean, it gives you the popular support and support in the armed forces. I feel like you kind of kind of got to do it. And it's probably the best way to use your political power. I mean, all these are, are pretty good, though, honestly. Yeah, framing party members and military personnel just seems really interesting here. Anyways, let's go and do that one. It's a 35 day focus. Paranoia is now at 40%. Uh, the Japanese have been defeated. Excellent. So we got that 35% cost reduction for land doctrines. Nice. We got ourselves a victory there. And we're going to just throw these guys in this army here for now. And go ahead and make sure that they're training up as well. While they're sitting there, and probably want to set them to use the motorized tail. Though we can see still have some penalties here with supply. Supply is still an issue. We did finish up with the infrastructure. So probably want to build here next. Got something about the anti-saboteur campaign. This can reduce the paranoia by 20. We need to launch a full investigation to catch the perpetrators and you gain the shipyard staff purged. So that's uh, some significant penalties, but it's for the fleet, which again, we're not really working on right now. It's only for a year. And then support for the opposition and Navy will increase by up to 5%. Or there are common occurrences in a modern military. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense to do that. And purging the staff increases your support because, you know, they're obviously unhappy about being purged. So, uh, yeah, that seems like uh, beneficial to us. So let's go ahead and do that and really helps with getting rid of that uh, paranoia. Now we're only at 28%. You can see who has been purged as well here. And now that we no longer have the conflict with Japan, we have the options here. Uh, so these might be a little bit more appetizing since we don't really want to give up access of all, almost all of our oil, a big chunk of our oil to the, the Germans who are our future enemy. And again, I'm not entirely sure if you can take that away uh, without just straight up declaring war on them probably is what you'd have to do or it would lead to war. So it might be better to instead try and get something from Japan because, you know, giving them the rest of this, I mean, there's nothing here. And so you're not really granting them them much. I uh, probably don't want to grant this to them, though. That's kind of a heavy cost. But yeah, if we give this, we're going to get uh, the Russian exiles, we'll get Japanese guns and rifles, and possibly fighters when the war starts. That seems like a a decent cost, consider considering the fact that we should be able to get it back. Uh, with this one here, Japan will supply units to fight with the Russian exiles during the war. A little bit more useful. 
costing more per little power, but uh, again, it's a more expensive cost as well. Now, you don't give up until the war begins. Let's just say we're going to do this one for right now. And that'll, of course, increase paranoia. So pretty useful that we uh, just got that reduced. All right, so it's been successful. They promised to supply our cause with arms in return for control of the northern part. I'm not entirely sure how much increase by. But yeah, we're at 40% currently. So still doing pretty good there. All right, so we got the Embrace of Black Hunters, but this is going to cause some paranoia issues once we start making use of it. I have a lot of options available now. Again, this one seems like it'd be pretty helpful to have. Again, I mean, they all do. Military factories are nice. I feel like we should get the ones that aren't specifically fascist, though. So, like, the covert operations or muster the old guard. Uh, recruits old guard units that will join your side when the second Russian Civil War starts and get that 10% in online support. Seems pretty useful to get, so we'll probably go for that one. But yeah, maybe not get this one here. The Youth Union Motorized Infantry. Uh, this here is for the cab. Get a new uh, cavalry commander and uh, unlocks decisions to recruit extra cab divisions and increase command power. Uh, but yeah, we'll go with this one. Just take a look at where we're at on non-aligned support. We're at 10%. Fascist support's a bit higher at 12%. Common support 65%. And we have the first Moscow trial. So another group of traitors have been brought to justice, and that actually does result in paranoia being reduced by a lot. Since it was currently at 70%, this is probably good. Uh, but of course it does result in a bunch of characters being purged, killed. And so now it's down to 20%. So it's manageable. We're doing all right managing that. Uh, I got a new decision here. Dismiss the counter-revolution. So by publicly denouncing any talk of a counter-revolution, we should be able to divert the attention of the NKVD away from our agents. However, it also might mean that we lose some supporters who believe in the false dismissal. All right, so basically this is the way to get rid of some paranoia. Kind of like a last case option here. And get rid of a lot, potentially 30 at a 10%. Kind of expensive, a little power wise. And. Hmm. It doesn't say uh, what you're losing, though. I'm just reducing the paranoia, but I assume it's going to do something. It just doesn't tell you how much it's going to reduce military support. Uh, this is where we're currently at. Army support's low, 10%. Navy support high though because of that herging. Popular support only 1% currently, so we haven't really made much progress there, guys. Has not moved all that much. Uh, we do have a little power. Okay. So again, I kind of feel like we should avoid advisors for now. Just since, you know, people are going to be purged. I don't know who all gets purged. I mean, I would like to get the chief of uh, Army. Navy and Air Force, so we can start getting some experience. That'd be useful. Uh, but yeah, I think we should focus on things we know we're not going to lose. Uh, so maybe like the industrial concern. Now we don't have all the options open up, but maybe we don't even want to get these two. Uh, industrial research speed's nice. So is electronics research speed. Uh, the railway companies, I mean, that's great for the supply hub construction speed. It takes so long to build supply hubs. And then also trains will be cheaper to produce and will have higher reliability. Uh, but yeah, you need a certain focus to get that. Uh, same here with the construction company. And these are nice. Well, getting the industrial concern is fine. We're also researching some of those and stuff. So yeah, I think it'd be wise to get that. Smirna. All right, so all these troops over here are trained up, but some of them seem to be having some supply issues. So again, we want to move them out of those areas. Smirna. See if that would uh, improve the situation for that guy. And oh, this guy's also having issues, so probably not going to. Uh, so let's just take a look here. Yeah, it seems like it's just too far away from any supply hubs. So what we'll do is move all these guys like so. Maybe that'll improve the situation for him. Uh, we'll take a look over at these other units as well. Conspiracy in the Academy. Okay, so our options are to ensure the loyalty of all future leaders. And this will result in a modifier anti-Soviet military thinking banned. So tons of penalties for your Air Force. 
but the political paranoia will be reduced by 20. Or you could say the academy is a place to ask questions and we must not prevent that and increase paranoia. Where is it at right now? It's currently at 28%. Hmm. Costs a little power to do that as well. I mean, our Air Force sucks anyway right now, so I assume you can get rid of that, right? Uh, it wouldn't make any sense to have anti-Soviet military thinking banned once the Civil War starts. And maybe the Soviets will continue to have it. So, yeah, we'll go with this. Reduce paranoia even further. Again, just try and get through our, as much of our focus tree as possible uh, before we have to face the, the Civil War here, guys. Uh, so we have a unit here having supply issues. Okay, so let's just move him. Doesn't really matter where we move him, just get him out of that supply situation. So we're not uh, having any problems. Then over here, a lot of units are over here having issues. Yeah, you just don't have the necessary supply hubs. Yeah, they just can't uh, reach them, I suppose. And I think the problem is actually the lack of trucks. That's what it is. We should probably prioritize the construction of trucks. Uh, let me see how we're doing on equipment here. Again, I don't know that we want to build any units. I think we'll probably want to destroy the army. At least try that. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I assume that what would happen is... I mean, unless you're getting a higher percentage of the army, in which case, then you wouldn't want to. Uh, but I think the way it works is that whatever the percentage is here, that's the percentage that you get of the army. So right now, if the Civil War started, we'd only get 10% of the army, and so you just want to get rid of them all. Uh, and then, you know, the, the same thing probably with the equipment as well. But if it's the way it used to be, then it does not refer to any units that you currently have building. And so yeah, I would probably want to wait to do anything on that front. We'll just build up the, uh, the stockpiles for now, uh, which as of right now... Need a lot of infantry equipment, trucks, and tanks. And you know what? We don't have control much of the Air Force right now, so let's just reduce the amount of planes that we're currently building, since those are just going to be used against us anyways. And then uh, pump into trucks here. And maybe pull back on the artillery a bit, too. Alright, so that'll give us more towards the trucks. And also, we can build stuff. Uh, over here in the east, so let's go and do so. We haven't built in our capital yet, so let's go and do that. I don't think they have anything here. So let's do a civilian factory, and then I suppose we'll do a military factory as well. Just make sure we have that. And then maybe get a military factory. I'm hesitant to build anywhere we don't know we'll have control of. Which is the only place we know we'll have control of is, is our capital here. Uh, we still have to make some other decisions here with the infiltrations. Paranoia is pretty low, so I suppose it makes sense to go ahead and do... We want to move this way rather than this way, uh, but it does seem it increases based on, I don't know, maybe population or something? I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, this one's 15, little power. Does it change the amount of paranoia? Looks like it does. So we're going to get 10 here. All right, well, we're still going to do it. We get that uh, increased popular support and support with the, the armed forces, so uh, we'll go ahead and take that one. And it takes two weeks to get it completed. And so we'll have more uh, more support with the, the armed forces. And this general here was accused of treason. So we can say there is no place in the army for such men. And it's going to result in these characters being purged or removed from the game. Two army leaders will get the trait cowed by Stalin does reduce the paranoia and increases the opposition support in the army. Uh, it feels like it's the most beneficial to do this. I know you're losing generals and stuff, but uh, yeah, let's just do it. I feel like it's just kind of part of going this route so that you're going to lose a lot of characters. I think you get more characters. I think there's some decisions allow you to like invite more characters back. So do we want to go just move the next place? Paranoia is not that high. Doesn't increase it by 10. We just need to get more more support. Popular support is currently at 2%. Army support is only at 12%. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do the next one, guys. I think that makes sense. We want to make sure we get control of all this territory back here, at the very least. Uh, and then muster the old guard is completed as well. I just, I'm not entirely sure how the uh, support here affects things. You, th you think it'd have to have some kind of effect. Like if communist support is real low, which is at 58% right now, 
that would should make the civil war easier in some capacity yeah not entirely sure how it works though uh, so we do have three options available here three new options so with this one here it increases paranoia by 20 but unlocks the decisions to sabotage industry i don't know if that'll be worth it this one adds equipment to our stockpiles once the civil war begins this also increases paranoia. It adds railway and supply hubs around the headquarter state. That's pretty useful because supply hubs are, you know, expensive to build. This recruits units that will rise up against the communists. That one's pretty useful to get. And you only need one of these. Uh, one of these focuses. However, there has to be 25% support for not lines. We're just not there yet. And then I believe this next focus here forces the civil war to begin. Yep. Popular support for an uprising will increase by 2%, and you get 10% more support uh, in the army since you're the one forcing it to happen rather than uh, Stalin. Okay. So again, we want to complete as many of these as possible. The construction speed would be nice to have, and more stability is always great as well. Stability is pretty low at the moment, getting all kinds of, of penalties. But yeah, I think we should complete... Probably, I mean, you definitely want to do this one eventually. I think we're going to do this one next, though, to get to this one here once, uh, to be able to take it as soon as we have the the 25% support. We're at 20% currently. Fascist support has gone down. So we're not that far from being able to uh, complete that. Uh, got this research finished up. All right, excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and do probably the artillery. Again, yeah, just kind of working on stuff that we'll eventually need anyways. Yeah, we're still... 1936. So yeah, we're going to get this. And we have gotten some funds for one of our MIOs for the, the infantry equipment. Okay. Um, so I haven't really looking at uh, taking a look at the MIOs. We have a lot more options in this one. I think we have this selected. Only show ones we have upgrades. Uh, we have a lot more options in this campaign as a major power than we did in the Swedish campaign. So a lot of choices for our tanks here. Uh, quite a few more fleet ones in that Swedish one. We only had two, now we have four. More for the aircraft. Just a lot more options, guys. Let's see how these guys have an upgrade. So our choices are defense, which will lead to reliability and production efficiency gain. Salt attack and reliability. Now defense is probably most useful for uh, infantry equipment. Or heart attack and piercing, which that's not going to help us much since I don't think we have any heart attack or piercing with our current infantry equipment. You kind of get uh, a few tanks to get that. Uh, soft attack is nice to have. But yeah, I think what we'll do is just get the defense because it's just 3% uh, is a bigger bonus. We do not currently have our MIA, MIO being used Maybe because it wasn't granting. No, it was granting bonuses. Let me just take a look and see the situation here. Now we're using it to the arms plant. Oh well, maybe not. Yeah, we need to add it here. So that's five experience. I think it's worth it to get the soft attack increased in the defense up, so let's go ahead and do that. And we'll need to update this. Yeah, I might just want to take a look. Yeah, we need to add all of these still. That's right, because you add it twice. One is for the actual modifiers for the equipment, and the other is the production modifier. So let's say you want to add it here, then you add it again. Yeah. Okay, so that's what the issue is. We still got to add it to all these, but the uh, experience is, is the issue here. Uh, we just don't have any excess, uh, excess experience. So I'm going to try and make it to the end of the, end of the year here. We'll see if we can. Uh, the Spanish Civil War has begun. I don't know if we want to participate in that or not. I suppose we really could use the army experience. Yeah, we might go ahead and send off some some troops to uh, to help out there. Uh, but who would want to help? Because we kind of want the monarchists to win. And they have not uh, started up their part of the Civil War yet. So yeah, I guess it wouldn't really be an option to help out until the Carlist rebelled. Uh, so I guess we'd want to get the... Uh, support companies here because we have pretty much everything else for the current year that we need so as you could get uh, better armor for your tanks don't really have the experience to design those though so yeah i think that's probably the best option you can also go for the radio or the reinforce rate and the coordination yeah i guess we'll get that 
and the Greek Civil War has started as well. So with the route that we have everybody going on their focus trees, you're going to see a lot of Civil Wars, guys. Have that mechanical computing. So could have just switched that over to this one. Uh, so I guess what we'll do, since we're not close enough to 1937, is work on those support companies. So we're going to want... I mean, you don't need field hospitals as much as the Russians, because uh, manpower is really not an issue. Probably the logistics, though. I think that'd be pretty useful for us to have. And we do have two options that we can use here for the logistic companies, uh, because these are for the trucks, and these are for the support equipment. I think we're going to want to do this one. Let me just show you guys. This one has... Some really nice bonuses, in particular, the Military Industrial Organization Research Speed Bonus. Once you get this, you're going to get another 6% research bonus. And so really, it's a good one to use for researching. And so yeah, we'll go ahead and get uh, them being used. Uh, we do have civilian factories available here. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to make it our first year. I'd like to, in the first episode, try and make it as far as possible, but at least the first year. But we've had so much stuff that we're doing uh, that we haven't, haven't been able to. Um, so let's go ahead and get, because I mean, I assume we're going to get this territory here and we've already built all over here and that's going to be the next thing we go for with our political power. Let me just see where Paranoia is currently sitting. But yeah, I assume we'll be able to get control of all this. And so we don't have a lot of military factories in this territory, as you guys can see. And so we're going to need at least some. And so this is what we're going to do. We're going to build one civilian factory there and then one military factory here for now. Um, so taking a look at the decisions, there's something that they say is new here. Oh, these are just the infiltration ones. Okay. So just letting us know that we can infiltrate over here. Uh, let's go ahead and infiltrate this location next because we're trying to make it over to here. So yeah, it makes sense. Uh, that's going to increase paranoia by 10. Let me just see where paranoia is currently sitting. 39%. I think we're okay. And just taking a look as we end here, where our support is, popular support is only 3%, so we're probably not going to get a ton of partisan units as of right now. Uh, Army support's 13%, Navy 16 Air Force 11 Overall, not very high. Not a lot of support. At the moment, we'll keep on uh, working on expanding the territory we'll get, trying to get control of all this over here. Now, I've seen when the AI does this at war, but they often get like territory right here, I believe. I might even get some over this way. I don't think you can uh, do any of those ones over there. I think it's got to border your your capital, so I'm not entirely sure how that works because clearly they get that territory, so I don't know if that's how the uh, not line plays a role. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you've done this route, since again, I'm very unfamiliar with this route of the focus tree. I've just seen the AI do it. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this first episode, even though we didn't get very far. I think it's kind of interesting seeing this uh, Civil War mechanic here. Kind of fun to, to play with. Uh, if you did enjoy the first episode, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. If you enjoy the content I create and like to help support the channel, there's many ways you can do so. You'll find links down in the description of any of our videos for our PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring store if you'd like to support us that way. You could also become a member here on YouTube. Uh, there's also links to all of our social media if you'd like to follow us on that, uh, on those sites. And you'll find a link to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. If you're looking for anything to watch while you wait for episode 2, then check out the front page of our channel. We've got thousands of videos all sorted by John. I do play a lot of Hearts of Arm 4 as well as other Paradox strategy games. So if you enjoy this genre, you should be able to find quite a few things that you might like. Uh, so I do hope to see you guys on the episode 2, and thanks for watching.